the fights that the, the fight that he took tonight with Benoit. I mean, everybody when the when the talk first started, and everybody was like, "Ooh, this is a bad fight for Poirier." Blah 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 blah. And then Poirier came out and said, "You know what? I didn't sign." And all of a sudden, this is sh that makes you a f legend. These are legendary fights. When you when you go in and you face a guy who is a savage and and and, and uh, you know looks like you can't win this fight or people think you can't win this fight, and then you go in and do it in spectacular fashion the way that he did tonight. In simple terms, any school of martial arts always falls in either of the two categories. Experienced and seasoned veterans who currently occupy the highest spots in the rankings and young and rising prospects who do everything in their power to snatch the veterans' positions. And it's often the case that the first group has to fight for their place under the sun, despite the underestimation and arrogant behavior from overconfident rookies. Please don't forget about the likes, comments with four words, and subscribe to the channel. Here we go. Number 5. Donald Cerrone vs. Alexander Hernandez We start today's compilation with a rather famous case that made some noise in January of 2019. By that time, a young 26-year-old prospect with a record of 10-1 arrived in the world's best league. Alexander Hernandez already had his debut in the UFC and earned two spectacular victories, one of which was against Benil Dariush, who is still at the top of the lightweight division, and such a great start motivated the matchmakers to put him against the Cowboy at the fight night event in the winter. Man, it's everything it's supposed to be, you know. Um, first, grateful to Cowboy for taking the fight, maybe against his better judgment. And uh, with that being said though, you know, I'm not drawn in by the, the promotion, the city, even his image or uh, persona of anything. Uh, it's just another day. And, and to me, standing across from Cowboy, I'm looking, I'm looking through the fighter, I'm looking at the man, and, and I think the persona and everything is just a big distraction. I just see myself facing an insecure little lad swinging on a saddle with a pop gun and a feather in his hat. You don't have much to say either, partner. I'll tell you this, little friend, I'll be sending your geriatric ass and yeehawing back to the stables on Saturday. I'm not the guy coming. to sit here and talk shit to you because I know what floor you're on. They don't put me in the wrong room. I'm right next to you, little motherfucker. So if you have something to say, you can come knock on my door, okay? We're not on the same floor. Yeah. I'm in a different suite, for one. And for two, you're all buddy-buddy in the back. It's calling how healthy and nice. I do look fucking healthy. I look great. You look like you've served the last two terms in the fucking Oval Office. You look worn out. You look aged and withered. I focus on one thing and one thing only. I know I'm going to be a champion. He's number two. He's always been number two. I'm going to be number one. Those who have been following this sport for a long time know that Donald Cerrone, who is a legend of mixed martial arts, has two sides. One is always confident in itself, its skills and preparation. It is unshakable and absolutely cold-blooded inside the octagon. Or the other one can put the veteran in such a state that the fighter is not able to do his best because of nerves and worries which eventually leads to his defeat. The prospect knew about this trait of Cowboy as well. That's why he intentionally used trash talk to unsettle Cerrone. It's going to be a violent handoff. I definitely think that it's... it's He's presenting himself as, as an active participant and an entertainer, and I'm on, on my way to the throne. So uh, I'm going to run through him and, and, and enter the new age. However, to his demise, Donald went out there as focused as never before. He taught an impudent prospect a valuable lesson despite being nine years older and finished him in the second round via TKO. The old guy, the old man, Everyone knows, man, what cowboy are you getting in there? You're getting this cowboy, you're getting the shit cowboy, because I knew tonight was the good one. I just knew. I felt walking out like, you know. Number 4. Glover Teixeira vs. Ion Kutalaba Next, we will overview a fight in the light heavyweight division. In April of 2019, a quickly rising prospect from Moldova, who already had time to make waves in the promotion with his peculiar attitude and exciting weigh-in ceremonies in the colors of Hulk, was looking to break into the top five. By that time, he was on a streak of two stoppage victories, which gave him an opportunity to challenge a seasoned Brazilian veteran. It's my time. It's uh, time for a uh, new generation. 
Ion Kudalaba decided to conquer the world's best league with a provocative behavior and stunts that are more appropriate for the fighters who focus on playing mental games with their opponent rather than working in the gym. Even despite the absence of hostility from Glover, who is the kindest person, the prospect allowed himself to openly disrespect him. And not only before the fight, but in the octagon as well, while Bruce Buffer was announcing their names. For which the future lightweight champion had to give him a public whipping that ultimately brought him to a victory via submission choke in the second round. I knew that he, he was going to come strong in the first round. And uh, I knew the second and third round, I was, you know, I was going to be able to finish this fight. I was so confident I was going to finish this fight. And I wanted to finish this fight of submission because uh, um, I, want tie, I, want, I want that record, man. I want to tie. Now I'm tied with John Jones with the most submission in light heavyweight. And uh, I'm pretty happy about that. Number 3. Derek Brunson versus Kevin Holland now, we would like to look at the fight that took place during the pandemic. On March the 20th of 2021, a charismatic prospect from California who was just reaching his prime and vigorously moving up in the rankings, being empowered with confidence in his powers, tried his luck in the fight against another veteran. Derek Brunson, who was 9 years older than Holland, had a streak of 3 victories, but in the eyes of the public and Kevin himself, he was a clear underdog. Hey man, I take what they give me. If a quick knockout happens, I will be happy. If a quick submission happens, I will be happy. I don't plan on, uh, I don't plan on being there for 25 minutes. You know, it's like uh, by the time we start fighting, it'd be close to 10 o'clock at night. And uh, in Texas, that's 12. That's close to my bedtime. So I gotta get them in there and get them out. So I'm definitely focused on the task at hand. But you know, victory over Derek Brunson. I keep telling everybody, everybody probably thinks I'm playing. I'm gonna go down to 170 pounds and fight Kamaru Usman for the belt or George Mazadov for his BMF belt, one or the other. Um, it's like, it'd be a picture-perfect road. I'd do George Mazadal at a catch weight, and then I'd do Usman at 170. And it's like, I woke up today at 188 pounds. I ain't cutting no weight for this fight. Life is easy. In fact, these two already had a story related to the cancellation of fights during that tough period, and many journalists started to raise a question if there was anything personal between the fighters. Kevin Holland, apart from sharing his big plans for the future at every corner, said there wasn't anything like that. However, his overall attitude was more than clear. Well, let's be real, if it was personal, I would have smacked him that day in the airport after I didn't get the fight and he got the fight and I was still butthurt about it. You know, it's like, it's not that personal. He said little things here and he said little things there, but the people online, they say way worse. Uh, at the end of the day, it's just competition. If it was personal, I would have smoked that for a long time ago. And actually, the results was evident. It's one thing when you have true confidence supported by the facts, but the words of a young guy who hasn't taken his career seriously for a very long time and entered the octagon only to get another paycheck is completely different. What can be said here? Holland made money but failed to get the victory. Brunson showed him the difference in the experience and won by a unanimous decision. Yeah, you know, um, you can always add to a win. If I, you know, he caught me in the first round, if I would have, you know, gave in at that moment, then, you know, it, there wouldn't have been any learning from that. It would have been, you know, just uh, upset, humiliated. He would have been talking trash for a whole year just off this fight. So, you know, to go out there, get the win, shut him up, uh, it feels good too. Number two, Justin Gaethje versus Rafael Fiziev. Yeah, if Gaethje, want, if you want to fight, you yellow guy one more yellow guy with yellow yellow hairs you know we need to, we need to know who is the best that's good match for you and for me if you're ready if you don't scared if you don't take shit, let's go at the number two spot we have a clash in the lightweight division that made the crowd in the london arena erupt in march of 2023 ufc 286 event featured a fight between two of the flashiest representatives of striking technique a young and ambitious Adaman who just began being treated seriously by the matchmakers in the promotion and a renowned Justin Gaethje. We're going to show Justin what a real highlight looks like, the true beauty of fighting. I'm waiting the best Gaethje in front of me. I'm waiting. I'm waiting his uh, best in shape and yeah. I'm waiting hard fight from him, I'm waiting blood. Yeah. I'm going to make my job. Yeah, touch him with first punch, with second, doesn't matter. I'm going to take his heart. 
By that period of time, Rafael Fiziev was taking the lightweight division by storm and collecting performance of the night bonuses. Prior to the fight with Justin, he was on a streak of six spectacular victories and let everybody know that he was ready for such a tough opposition that Gaethje represented. He didn't shy away from saying that he was going to get rid of Highlight and take his spot among the best lightweights. Sorry, man. He deserves everything about people talk about him. Yeah, but Saturday night, Saturday night, I have to show, I have to show real highlight also. I don't know, yeah, I'm, I'm still thinking like that, but, but what I can do, bro? I'm, I'm just too good, you know, that's why I'm going too, too, too fast, bro. In reality, though, everything fell in its place. Not only did Justin Gaethje take Adaman to school and show him what a true, authentic savagery looks like in all of its magnificence, but he also humbled him and taught him a lesson on humility. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy with my performance. I fought a perfect fight. I had to fight a perfect fight versus such a dangerous opponent. Um, and I'm looking forward to watch his future fights. Number one, Dustin Poirier versus Bernard Saint-Denis. I'm gonna get that BMF belt because I deserve it. Then I'm gonna go for Islam Makashev. He won't do three rounds with me. Nobody is gonna do three rounds with me. I'm gonna catch everybody. I'm coming for everybody in the lightweight division. It's not gonna last long till I have the belt around my waist. And there's nothing better for the epic finale than the last test of the veteran in the world's best league who faced a tough challenge in March of 2024. At UFC 299, Diamond from Louisiana got another opportunity to prove to each and everybody that he deserves his spot among the elite of the main promotion. He crossed paths with the young Frenchman with a sound nickname of God of War, who was on a streak of five victories by finishes and who had time to build a reputation of a dangerous and uncrushable warrior, not knowing the taste of defeats by stoppage. Uh, well, I was uh, really, uh, really happy. Uh, he, he's a tough guy, uh, a lot of tough guy in, in this division, in the top five. He, it is surprising to a lot of people that I'm facing him, but I think it's one of the only weight class where it's surprising to face a, a top five opponent after five finishes in a row. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm really happy. He, he, he has a lot of experience. He is an, a former entering champion, of course. So it, it's really going to be a test match for me. Uh, it's a big test to, 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 to see if I'm, I'm ready for, for whatever is next behind Poe. It's because he's finished his last five opponents. You know, he's a very dangerous guy, young, gritty, just a tough, tough guy. And uh, he's earned his, his shot to crack an, into the top of the division. I, I respect what we do, and that's just how it goes. Yeah. If, if, if everybody here liked uh, the Chandler Poirier fight, I think you will like the Saint Denis Poirier fight. The 30th anniversary fight of Dustin Poirier inside the UFC went in the best way possible. Diamond shined in front of the crowd in Miami, like in his best years, stopping Bernard Saint Denis with a stiff knockout in the second round. By the way, here's an interesting coincidence. The fight ended at the exact same time as the second bout between Poirier and Conor McGregor. And the main character in all of this action happened to be the same right hook that smashed another chin in his way. It feels good, man. Uh, the old dog still got it. You know, when I first came into the sport, 35 was young, you know, but now kids are doing this so early. The sport's grown so much that 35 is older now when you look at the, the, the bigger picture in mixed martial arts. But it feels good, man. I had a long training camp. Leave your opinion in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this video. And of course, hit the like button and the new videos will come out more frequently. See you soon.